Ladies, it's your time to shine with all things fabulous with First for Women on Afternoon Express. For insurance with a host of fabulous benefits, call 0861 11 1844 or SMS FIRST to 49267. Day we've all been waiting for. We are live. Good afternoon. Welcome to Afternoon Express right here on SABC3. I'm Bonang Mateba. And boy, are we excited to be back on your TV skins from our love straight to your lounge. And today, you get to chat to us. You get to tweet to us live as it happens. So make sure you don't go anywhere. Very excited to be back on your screen. Today, we're going to be celebrating amazing women in sport. A couple of days ago, we witnessed history as Carolyn Watson won the Comrades Marathon. She's in the love today. Also, Cass Naidu. So that Africa's very first female cricket commentator and a true advocate when it comes to women's sports. Very, very excited. But you can see, right, the boots are out, the jackets are out, the hats are out. We're all covered up because it's winter and it's getting colder and colder and colder. So today, we've got a few, you know, a few remedies to make your winter a little bit warmer. So don't go anywhere. You can call us. You can tweet us. 083-913-3278 at Afternoon Chat on Twitter. Hashtag Afternoon Express. So much to do. So little time. Never alone. Bon Bizzle is in the hizzle. How you doing, babe? <laughs> Thanks, Bonang. Wow. Did you hear that sound? It's my heart beating so loud because I am so excited for us to be coming to you live from the loft today. And if you're wondering why we're suspended from the ceiling and why we're hanging about literally, don't go away because later we introduce you to a new fitness trend, aerial silks. It's just taking the world by storm, right, Definitely. ladies? <laughs> but uh, for now, that's not all. Jeannie. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. We are truly ridiculous, ex ridiculously excited to come to you today on Afternoon Express. And, of course, we are joined by the first lady of cricket herself, Kaz Naidu. Welcome to our studio. It's lovely to be here. Three children later, and this is what you are looking like. I have the secret. We can chat. I, I, I need that secret. <laughs> and, of course, you know, we're talking about strong women in sport today in the studio. But the women in my family that are incredibly dynamic and strong as well, do you know what they do for sport? Please tell. They cook. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, it's a good exercise. Uh, they make. Yeah, it's a it's very good exercise. Muscle. you got to so, work at it. Yeah, we have Chloe and Stanley in the, in the studio. Now, it is freezing cold outside. So, I think the order of the day is soup. What Indeed. are you making? Indeed. So, we're making fish soup with a very yummy, cheesy breadsticks, which you can dip in and just enjoy together. It's delicious for these cold June nights, isn't it? Oh, this is a problem for me this winter, are oh, these delicious breadsticks. So, don't go away. Let's cross over to Bonang with our first guest on the couch. Thank you so much, Jeannie. All that food and you still look that great. Crazy, right? Life is so unfair. For all those recipes, details, ingredients, and of course, how to make our yummy treat, make sure you log on to our website, www.afternoonexpress.co.za. Keep tweeting us and make sure that your devices are fully charged. A little bit later, we're going to be taking your calls on 083-913-3278. So today, like Jeannie said, it's all about women in sport. And my very first guest is a name that is definitely on everybody's lips at the moment. Earlier on this year, she became the first South African women to win the two oceans marathon since 2001 just a month later she went on to win the comrades as well making her the first south african woman to take on both accolades in the same year since 1992 she's done all of this while still lecturing adverts and she's still a mom she's still fabulous she's amazing ladies and gentlemen on the couch it's carolyn watsman Lovely to meet you. Congratulations. How are you loving the attention? Is it too much? Getting used to it? <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me here today. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, the attention has been overwhelming and it's just, it's so amazing to have so much South African support. I, all the messages I've been getting, thank you, everybody. And now, Carol, you know, uh, Caroline, I was watching the comrades and, uh, you know, I found your style of running quite different you were very relaxed there were times when you were walking and then you ran and you were walking i mean the comrades is 87.7 kilometers long right first of all how do you keep your strength mentally for that long well i think that the walking helps me a little <laughs> bit to do that yeah. because it is long and i'm um, I think that, you know, if you're going to be doing that kind of a distance, you first of all have to enjoy running to a certain extent. True. And um, I enjoy it more when I get to run and then have a little bit of a scheduled walk break on uh -huh. the hills, you know, keep, keep it fun and 
Um, also, what I try and do is just break it up into little segments. So okay. I'm not thinking from the start I'm going to be running nearly 88 kilometers today. I'm thinking I'm just going to get to this particular point. Mm -hmm. And then part of that for me is also just having those walks. So I'll tell myself, okay, I'm just going to get to the first big hill and then I'll allow myself a little walk on that uphill and just break it up that way. And during your run, was there a specific moment or time or place or level where you thought, you know what, I actually might win the Comrades Marathon this year? Um, during the comrades, during the comrades, only when I crossed the line and that tape was in front of me did I really? know that I would win it. Yes, because when you're at the in the lead, mm. you're not getting that information from the crowds. It's much easier to chase because then they've seen when the leading ladies went through and they can okay. tell you one minute ahead or whatever. But when you're in the lead, you have no idea where the rest of the field is. And I was not going to let myself relax until I knew that I had it. So I just kept pushing right until the end. I mean, you're also a mom, right? And you also lecture at VIT. So how is your day from the start of the morning all the way into the evening? How do you schedule everything to make sure that everything fits while also including your training for all these ultra marathons? You know, it, it can be crazy, and I'm very, very fortunate because my husband's so supportive. Yeah. So the beginning of the year, I said to him, I really want to try to win Comrades, but it's not going to be easy. There's going to yeah. have to be many sacrifices. And we sat down and we spoke together about how we would try and fit it in. Mm. And one of the things to do was to just leave very early in the morning for work before the kids were even awake. And that yeah. was quite difficult for me because I knew I wouldn't see them in the morning, yeah. and I want to be there for them to start their day. But um, my husband said to me, you know what, it's, it's fine. He'll look after them. He'll take care of them, get them to school, and I'll spend more time with them in the evening. So, so we just managed as a family. And this university, I mean, you're a lecturer there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, how have your students, you know, reacted to you winning the Comrades? Uh, you know, it's, it's been incredible. They were yeah. actually on study break, um, and they wrote their exam on Thursday. And after the exam, they all stood up and cheered for me. Aww. So it was, it was just amazing to have that kind of support That's from them. fantastic. And I mean, you know, Caroline, between the Two Oceans Marathon and the Comrades Marathon, what would you say is uh, the most, you know, the most um, interesting, the difference between the two races? And which one of those two races did you enjoy the most? Well, Two Oceans is definitely a lot shorter yeah. than that. And beautiful as well. It, quite is, scenic. it yeah. is such an amazing race. And out of the two, I think I actually enjoyed Two Oceans a little bit more this year oh, because really? it came to me as a surprise. I did okay. not think in a million years I'd ever be able to win Two Oceans. So when I went into the lead, I yeah. just had so much excitement, so much adrenaline. It was just, it was incredible. And I just felt so strong. Whereas Amazing. at Comrades, I wanted to win it. I'd put a lot more pressure on yeah. myself. And the last 20 kilometers at Comrades, I was tired. I was mentally having to dig quite wow. deep to keep going and to push through. Fantastic. Well, congratulations. I can't even Thank imagine you. how you feel right now. What an amazing achievement. Congratulations. Well, you're going to be hanging around, right, Ray, in, in the loft, right? You're not going anywhere because no, we've got a few more are. questions for you, Caroline. <laughs> but after the break, Cass Nidey joins the conversations as we discuss the role of women in sport. And Cal tells us a little bit more about G-Sport for Girls. You're watching Afternoon Express on SBC3. Don't go anywhere. Gosh, my husband sent me a message, Caroline Rossman on the show with you. I'm like, girl crush. <laughs> She's fab. Hey. Me to sit. Must I sit on this side? Sorry. Anyone, who's calling? Taz, Cash, Cass, I'm just hearing names. Okay. I'm back in the... <laughs> Okay, I'm going to do the intro. All right, do you want to do the intro? Yeah. Okay.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, in 2003, she made history by being the first South African woman to anchor a Cricket World Cup. Since then, she's been a staple in the local and, interna and international commentating scene and spent four years as the Corporate Relations Manager at Cricket South Africa. In 2006, along with her husband, she launched G Sport for Girls, an online initiative aimed at raising the profile of women in sport. Joining the conversation now is Cass Nidey. Welcome to to our love. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> what haven't you done? Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. You know, sitting back and having a look at your career, you think about what you haven't done. Yeah. But I think also sometimes it's good to just be in the moment and celebrate and, and, and accept what has happened. But I guess the greatest achievement will always come down to the kids and will always take out any career achievement yeah. that I've had. Absolutely. I actually was speaking to my little six-year-old goddaughter the other day and I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And she said, a professional cricketer. Wow. And her mom just wow. said to me, leave it. I don't want to kill her dreams. But no, but, but it's a good option. Yeah. It really is because women's cricket is turning professional in South Africa. Yeah. So it is a proper career option. But at what point for you did you say, oh, I'm going into cricket? <laughs> well, I was sitting um, and minding my own business doing my art at the age of 14 and I heard a woman's voice on TV commentating cricket. I dashed to the lounge. Six hours later, I was glued to the screen, turned to my mom. I said, that's it. I'm going to be South Africa's first female cricket commentator. And when that moment did happen, you know, it's always like an out of body experience. Do you remember totally. where you were and what exactly was happening? With I you? was sitting in the lounge and right up until that moment, I always considered myself a teenager who wasn't quite sure what was going on and where I was going. And when the penny dropped, that was it. I even missed a Michael Jackson concert. I missed the Janet Jackson concert. N not the Jacksons. Hello. Yes, I did. <laughs> Just to bunk school and get to the cricket so I can start living the dream. Yeah. So for about 11 years, I just lived cricket. So at the age of 25, when they said, would you like to host the Cricket World Cup? I thought, well, I didn't think you'd ask. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, everybody gets to a point in your career where you've done everything you need to do and you sort of give back and you mm. want to pay it forward. And that's what you've done with your initiative, G-Sport for Girls. For anybody that hasn't heard about it, I have a G-Sport award, by the way. So. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, what is it and how did, did the idea come about? Well, in 2006, I was busy hosting a radio show yeah. and I'm sure Caroline would agree, is that every time I spoke to a woman in sport, she always had a tough story to tell. Yeah. There's no support, nothing's happening. So I just did what every crazy woman would do. I quit my radio show. I taught myself how to build a website with my husband and we started sure. the online initiative. Launched the G Sport Awards with 20 women at the Westcliff and handed Penny the first award. And uh, as they say, the rest is history. Tenth yeah. awards this year. You know, you say that you often speak to female sportswomen who have had difficulty, but surely you as a woman in sports commentating weren't received so easily yeah. when you first started out. I mean, how, how did people react to it? The younger guys found it tough in the commentary box. The older guys were a lot more receptive. Um, Robin Jackman, all-time greatest mentor, and I remember when they said, you will be hosting the post-match presentation. Remember, no other woman in the world has done this. I thought, well, that's great. And he came up and he just took me through my paces. So I think it was tough, but not just for men. I think women as well, they're used to having a man commentate. So I used to have women stopping me at Woolies while I'm busy trying to do my shopping, and they'd say, really prefer a man commentating. No, no. offense. No. No offense. If you were one of those women, <laughs> change your channel. But let's be honest, um, wow. the rules are made for men in that environment, and, and that's why I knew that. And yeah. it motivated me more. When someone said I couldn't do something, I just stuck my head forward and I went for it. Caroline, I mean, you as well, I mean, you, for, as a sportswoman, you know, in a male-dominated sport, like, you know, ultra marathons, was there a moment in your career where you felt, what am I doing? I'm just crazy for having decided to, you know, embark on this journey. You know, I think that I'm very fortunate that I've come into the running at a time where women are accepted in the running yeah. scene. Mm. I think there's a lot of sports that are still not getting the attention that they deserve. But as far as running, I feel that we are treated equally in most situations and it's only improving day by day. I want to know, you're married, do you train with your husband? My husband often comes in cycles with me while I run. Because <laughs> I was wondering, how is he going to handle it when you're running? And you're like, okay, baby, I'll meet you at the finish line. <laughs> and then carry on. But you know, like, like a, a genie's uh, uh, god uh, kids. Yeah. Did your kids, do they want to, you know, follow in mom's footsteps? Cass, I'm going to, you know, throw it to you once Caroline has done, 
is done answering. Any little... Um, my seven-year-old has said to me that she doesn't think that she wants to be a runner, but she wants to cycle. And I'm very okay. happy for her to do whatever sport she enjoys. As long as she's staying active and healthy, okay. that's the most important thing okay. to me. Now, Cass is actually a mother of three. And you said your little one, the smallest little one, is 17 months. She basically had a baby 17 months ago. This is amazing. <laughs> Where? But you say he's going to be a little rugby player. Are the other two going to be cricketers? Well, Daniel's probably going to be a soccer star. He yeah. did mention rugby. We all walked past him when he said that because he's such a pretty little boy. Ella believes she's Elsa from Frozen, so she just walks <laughs> around singing Frozen songs and dressed as Elsa. But, you know, I always believe the children should grow into themselves. Mm. And um, a lot of people say he should be captain of the cricket team. I say, well, rather be a golfer. I'd like to caddy. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, I, what I want to ask you as a commentator and a woman's, you know, advocate in, in women's sports in general... Serena Williams recently won her 20th Grand Slam. What slammed on Twitter, social media, and a lot of backlash after she was crowned the champion the once again. Is. Why do you think women get it so tough and it's so difficult for them and they have to mm -hmm. you know, prove themselves a little bit extra, a little bit more than their male counterparts? It's interesting you said that because we had a conversation about this the other day yeah. among a couple of very strong women. I think it's tough for society to uh, accept strong women. We don't know how to be around them. We're almost a little bit too nervous. So suddenly we can find things wrong with them. What I love about Serena, she's so comfortable in her power that mm. whatever comes around her, it just goes off her back. And uh, I don't think we'll see another athlete like this in our lifetime because I think these are once-in-a-generation um, athletes. And I think when you look at sexism and racism, it just adds to the power of that brand of Serena. And you can hate her all she wants, but she's got 20 Grand Slam titles. Hala. <laughs> <You know. laughs> what can we do as sports fans to encourage women in sport and to support them more? Accept it. Accept yeah. that women have dreams, that they will go after the gold medal, they will win, and your perception of women is really not her perception of herself. And I think sometimes we assume we know what women are about, mm. but we're moms, we're daughters, we, we try the best to do what we can. In the end, we all want to reach the top, so just support each other. Now, I know that your brother is also a huge influence in your life. Can you tell us a little bit about that relationship? Oh, he's crazy. The fact that he backed my dream, because I was 14 and he was 16, and my mom said, absolutely not. And I said, that's the motivation I needed. Sean, what do you think? And he said, I'll mentor you. And he has. And he continues to do Whoa. so. So when I have that moment, you know, you have that moment where you need someone to just lay it down. Yeah. I called him the other day, and he properly laid it down of where things are. He says... Once you get to that glass ceiling, you've got to break through and get to the next glass ceiling because there's always glass ceilings you've got to break through in life. Not about being a man yeah. or a woman, but it's about achieving things that perhaps you never thought you would. Caroline, Did you have a mentor? Yeah, Sorry. I was, I was about to ask you, for people who uh, you know, are at that level of a glass ceiling, and, I mean, yourself and Serena, your names are on our lips for the past couple of days. What would you say to a young woman who's watching Afternoon Express right now and wants to follow in your footsteps, be it sport, entertainment, or any other industry? No, I think that you have to believe in your ability to do things and you always have to try and be bettering yourself, just little step by little step. And it doesn't matter what anybody says to you. I mean, the amount of people who looked at me like I was insane when I said I want to win comrades a year ago <laughs> after I came sick, I said to people, I actually want to win. And they all looked at me like I was completely insane. But I believe that I could and my support system believed that I could. So believe in your dreams and keep working towards them. Absolutely. Well, congratulations. You are <laughs> truly an inspiration Why to me. Why don't we do a half marathon next year? Shant. <laughs> <laughs> Tweet us at Afternoon Express at Afternoon Chat on Twitter right now. Let us know which woman you are absolutely loving right now in sport. Be it Caroline, Serena, Cass. Who in your life inspires you to keep pushing? Make sure you use our official hashtag, Afternoon Express. Plus, a little bit later, we're going to be taking your calls live on air. 083-913-3278. Do you know that song from Sia that goes... I want to swing from the chandeliers. <laughs> so do you know who is swinging from our chandeliers at this very moment? Well, the whistle the from the roof fizzle. What's going on, girl? <laughs> oh, yeah. So while you weren't looking, I slipped into something comfortable and appropriate. Why? Stick around and you'll find out because after the break, we're hanging, literally. My name is David Lissedi. It takes me a very long time to get home from work.
so I miss the thing that really matters to me every day. But today, thanks to NetBank, my dream has come true. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Daddy's got a car. You too can make the things that really matter happen. Simply open and use a NetBank account. Tell us your dream and you could win it. Am I only asking you? Yes. I'm the only one with a mic. She's just a demonstrator. So. I got you. Okay. Lucian? Express yourself. Welcome back to Afternoon Express here on SABC3. Now, if you're bored of the usual workout and fitness programs and want to try something new that's low impact and graceful, then stay glued to your screen. Today, we'll be finding out about a fun and exciting alternative exercise. It's called Aerial Silks. And I'm joined by Nikki and Roxanne. So... Slavis. Slavis. <laughs> the owners of the Silk Workshop. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. What is Aerial Silks? Thank aerial you. Silks is, as you see in front of you, two fabrics. Yes. And you climb up and down them and you do beautiful maneuvers and tricks and strength moves and drops. Right. I'm, I'm looking at Jeannie's face and she looks no, so scared. <laughs> because I totally want to be in on this silk action. <laughs> this looks like a phenomenal exercise. Yeah, is yeah. it actually a fitness thing? Well, it's originally Amazing. a performance art, that's, right? That's correct, And yes. how long do these silks have to be? Um, well, this performing? is very short, but it varies on the height of the venue, but usually anything between 5 to 12 metres. Okay, yeah. wow. can I watch? Because I want to see exactly how technical this is. <laughs> because then I'm booking with you and coming to train. You get to see it just now because I've got a trick up my sleeve. But what are some of the dangers when performing? Well, you have to stay fit all the time mm -hmm. and be strong enough to execute your routine. Um, also, you have to make sure everything's rigged properly. Okay. And also, you have to make sure you wrap correctly because you do a lot of wraps and fall. And if you wrap wrong, then you can fall out of the silk. So, what, what, like, What part of your body has to be the strongest to do this type? Everything, grip, everything. core, upper body strength, everything. What do I remember? Because I got a chance to do one-on-one -on -one, uh, lessons with you, lucky me. It was really hard, but I do remember a few things, and you did say I wasn't that bad. You right? were very good, yes. You were okay. awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, I want to watch you. <laughs> so, before we start, what is the difference between um, aerial silks as a performance mm -hmm. and as a performance? artwork like fitness forms sorry. well it's obviously if you're doing it for fitness it's not as serious you can take your time and you just progress at your your own level that's the beauty about it there's always something for everybody to do and if there's something that you know gives you a problem you just skip it and move on to the next thing so right and can anyone Try it? Anybody can try it, but as I said, they progress at their own level. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, <laughs> cool. So, so, so we're going to do a demonstration. Yeah, the moment you've been so waiting fine. for, Jeannie. <laughs> okay, the pressure is on. Okay. Okay, Roxanne is going to demonstrate. and then okay, I'll stay on this one so that I can perfect. actually watch you. Okay, well, Roxanne's going okay. to demonstrate because I've got a mic. I don't want to awesome. knock it off. <laughs> what is the difference between <laughs> this and aerial yoga? Um, aerial yoga is performed on a hammock and it's more holding movements okay. and stretching. And the sulks is more about, you know, core strength, upper body strength. And it's a lot more extreme as okay. well. Okay. 
So what do you do? You actually lock your feet yes. into the silk. Yes, this is a, called a basic foot lock. This is the basic of all your tricks. Um, there we go. <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luckily, she's quite flexible. <laughs> she is, she is. Luckily. And then, okay. and then you can stand with the lock. It's very safe. I've got stage fright, by nice. the way. I was, <laughs> much, I was much better at this last week. <laughs> okay, and now you're okay. going to do the upside down stag. So you're going to slide your arms to your hip bones. Okay. And straighten the bottom leg and hold your weight. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh, awesome. Wow. A natural, huh? <laughs> I think you look so elegant, Bonnie. But we're going to lose you. You're going to run away from our family and, and to come on to see just bend the knee. There we go. Awesome. I'm supposed to look way more graceful doing this. Like, you look Rosa. <laughs> It Don't is worry, such an there. elegant thing to do, isn't it? Is. it? Well, it our is. motto is getting fit beautifully. So, you know, you get to you, you get fit and you look gorgeous doing it as well. But not so. just fit. I can imagine you can get very strong, strong from doing this. Yes, very strong. Okay, so now what's your next move? Yeah. Okay, now have you planned a few like amazing? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and they all have special names, right? Yes, the one we just did was called. I was called an upside down stag. Okay, cool. Mm. And now you're going to do a footlock. No, now you're no? going to just do a gentle stretch because obviously we, we would normally do a warm up for five minutes and then do, go run through all the tricks and then we do a stretch down at the end. So this is how we stretch at the end on your lower back. So this oh, is yeah. the upside down straddle. Oh, you just that bend your looks back like first. it's massaging yes. in the lower back. That looks so good. And then you put your hands on. And you just tip, <laughs> lifting, yes, lifting. Yes, we legs. want you to lift your legs. Like there we go. Look at that. I told you she's, <laughs> she's a natural. Yes. And then, and then you just I hang just and stretch. Yes. Wow. <laughs> oh, am, I, am I doing this on TV? <laughs> that was very oh, too tempting. Turn it back this way. <laughs> and then you, you can do the chandelier that we practiced with you, where you hook, the leg, hook one leg into the silk here. There we go. Hook the Where's toe the in. Where's the silk? There, okay, <laughs> there we go. Okay. And then pull the leg to the back. There we go. Beautiful. How does that feel? It feels amazing. <laughs> I want to stay here. That is incredible. Now, what are the risks involved in this? I mean, is this quite dangerous? Um, well, we for fitness, we don't teach anything that's really dangerous because there is a lot of drops where you finish hanging on one arm, for example, so we don't teach things like that. We only teach the, the drops, you know, where you wrap safely and things like that. But when you're performing, there is an element of danger. Well, so. it looks incredible. So anyone can do it. Where do we find out about these classes nationwide? Okay, okay it's good to look on our website, which is www.silkworkshop.com. Okay. I mean, they look graceful and everything, but it's such a workout. Look at me. You are drenched, <laughs> but I'm so impressed. You looked absolutely Thank incredible. Thank you. <laughs> well, she's absolutely going to run away from our family and join the circus at some point. But let's have a look what Bonang is up to in the kitchen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jean. She's absolutely going to be trending, Bonnie. <laughs> But in case you missed the intro earlier on right here on Alton Express, we are in the kitchen with Claire, of course, resident chef. And today we're going to be making a Sicilian-style fish soup. I don't even know how to follow that act. That was amazing. Let's just cook, Claire. Okay, All right? Cook. Keep it clean and neat. Just what do we start? What do we need? Okay, so a beautiful, beautiful fish soup to really warm the cockles of your heart for this mm. winter. You know, it's getting really cold at the moment. So you always want to start with a good base when it comes to soup. Yep. So that is onions, celery, you can have carrots. I've chosen fennel because it really pumps up the flavor. Gotcha. We're going to pop that into a nice hot pan. Just a little bit of olive oil in there. A very hot pan. Very Let's hot just pan. turn that down a little bit. Yeah. And it's going to sizzle and splatter. So. Don't be scared. Yeah. Oh, that smells delicious already. That's the thing. And it's Can eliminating the smell of all of that. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole lot of fish going on in this kitchen today. So that's going to sizzle away over there. And then we're just going to add just a, a hint of white wine. Yum. Just to deglaze the pan. Uh -huh. And then a sprinkling of chili flakes, because I love chili flakes, and especially in winter, you kind of want a little bit of spice. All right. But okay, what I would ask, you can obviously substitute this fish for chicken or beef Absolutely. or lamb. All right. Absolutely. True. I mean, traditionally, in terms of the Sicilian style of fish soup, it mm. is fish soup, but whatever you like, whatever right. you want. So, you know, have that great base and then just add whatever meats you would like to, whatever sort of tickles your fancy on mm. a, a Monday evening. What did okay. you stop in there? Garlic? That's just a little bit of garlic. Mm -hmm. I just crushed it and then that's going to go straight into the pan. And then just a little bit of that 
fish stock. So that's just going to complement that fish really well. And then that goes in there probably about a cup and a half. All right. And then here comes the, the real authentic sort of Italian side of it is those good ripe tomatoes. Gotcha. Straight out of a can. They really, really are fantastic mm -hmm. and full of flavor. These are the cherry tomatoes because they look, look great. Delicious. They look so cute. Two you want to pop that in there? Your I'll favorite? help you. Yeah, yeah, might as well, you know. Ooh. Get on in there. And you see. can see the color already. It just looks so fantastic. It's red. It's vibrant. And you know something of that color is going to taste fantastic. And then how long does that stay on? That's going to go for about stove. 10 minutes. No, uh -huh. we're going to put that on later. Actually. Later. So the thing with fish is that you don't want to overcook it. Yeah. So we get this going. Because it becomes very dry, Exactly. Right? So we're going to get this reducing probably about a third of the way. Just okay. so it starts to thicken up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then the fish goes in. So that's, right. that we're going to do later. Let's season just a little bit here just to sort of get those flavors started. Uh -huh. Let you me get this out of your way. Pop in a little bit of the pepper, and that's really it. We're just going to leave that like that, just to simmer down. Now we can crank that heat up again, and that's really that. So when do you know to get the fish in then, get the fish out? Before it gets too dry, before it starts flaking and falling yeah, all over the you're place. You're going to see it changes color. So at the moment, it's a little bit translucent. Mm -hmm. It goes slightly opaque, and you can... Don't be scared. Just take one piece out, right. flake it slightly. If it flakes, it's ready. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, this is recipe number one. What is recipe number two that we're going to be making after the break? Oh, we're going to make the cheesy breadstick. So oh. the cool thing about soup is that you want to have something to dunk into it, don't you? So we're going to do that. We're going to make some amazing dunkers that you can put all beautifully on the edge of your plate uh -huh. or on the edge of your bowl. And that's and obviously after the family. You're going to yeah. show us what to yeah. do. So all that's right. that for now. Fantastic. Well, for all the recipes and information, www.afternoonexpress.co.za. After the break, like we said, we're going to be making part two mm -hmm. of our recipe live on Afternoon Express right here on SABC3. Don't move. South Africa, are you with us? Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Remember, today is the first day that we are coming to you live from our loft, straight to your homes. We hope you're enjoying the show so far. Let us know how you feel about the show by tweeting us at Afternoon Chat, hashtag Afternoon Express. And of course, our Facebook page is Afternoon Express, and so is our Instagram. So do visit us and share your thoughts. So we're cooking in the kitchen with the gorgeous Claire Wynn Stanley. The soup is on the boil. We haven't yet thrown in the fish. No, we haven't. And now my yes, de resistance, the best part of life, cheese and bread. Oh, isn't it just? <laughs> it's the reason I'm, I'm so really. dead. We, we have those things in common. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> okay, uh, so this has started to bubble and boil. We're going to just let that simmer a little bit while we do this, mm. and then we're going to throw in that um, yes. fish. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do is... 
bring over that bread. We've just got some beautiful chia butter breadsticks, fresh breadsticks, that we're just going to butter with this delicious flavoured butter. It's amazing. Sun-dried tomato and basil. Yum. Oh, I am a sucker for sun-dried tomatoes. Okay, <laughs> do I just butter it as if I'm making a sandwich? Literally, we're going to use an entire pot on this bread. We yes. just got to. So while you do that, I'm going to just add in some of this cheese. Because like I said, you know, the cool, the cool thing about soup is having those accompaniments that you Definitely. can add extra flavor to what's happening in the pot and just really make it a meal. I think a lot of people are scared of soup because they don't think it's a meal. Like, you know, it's like I a I actually starter. think that. Yeah. I don't feel it's filling. I have to choose something. So yeah. this is perfect for it. That's also a cool thing about starting a, a soup with a really great base with lots of vegetables and things that are going to add some wholesomeness to the soup. Mm. I think when you have like a watery, wishy-washy sort of chicken something, it doesn't really... Look, yeah. Chicken's not great. Chicken's amazing. But when there's nothing with the chicken, you know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. You're doing a fantastic job there. Thank I'm you. just going to get cheesing that up there. And you can honestly do anything here. You can have, hmm, say, garlic butter. That would be amazing. Oh, wow. Y'all, yeah, you're getting very excited. <laughs> the cheese and the garlic. And then you could love... have, um, you know, just um, say, take some of those tomatoes and just squelch them over there. Also fantastic. And any type of cheese as well would go amazingly on this. Absolutely delicious. Yeah, so you can actually be quite creative in the kitchen, I suppose, with yeah, whatever yeah. your tastes are. Just put anything on the bread. You absolutely and Of course, can. if you want to know exactly what we are using, though, do visit our website, which is Afternoon Express, and we've got our shopping list there. We've got all of Claire's recipes and the other chefs that we've had on the show as well. It's actually a great help whenever you need to be creative Walking through the aisles of the shopping mall, thinking, what on earth am I going to cook? I think this is the best help. It is a cool way to do it. And yeah. you can just grab it off on your phone and just download it right there while you're in the aisles. Yeah, because otherwise when I go shopping, I just say, oh, there's nothing here to eat. Because I don't have in my mind <laughs> yeah. what to Yeah, and that's exactly prepare. it. It's how to pair it. how to put it all together and really make something of what you see while you're walking around. But, you know, it's not that hard. Like, you know, there are people out there like myself who can help you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is bubbling away here. This is what we want. We want that liquid reducing. We want those flavors intensifying. And now we're going to add in that fish. Like we, uh, me and myself and Benang sort of discussed, you can add any fish you want, any sort of meats you like. It's just that, you know, sort of traditionally, as a Sicilian soup goes, it is a fish soup. And mm. that goes in there. And that's going to, you know, go in there for... Roughly, you know, it also depends on the size of the fish. If the fish is very thin, it's going to cook for less. So you just want to be mindful of that and just keep watching it. And like I said, don't be scared to take a piece out. No one's judging. So yeah. that, that's really it. And we're going to leave that. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit and just let it simmer a little bit. Okay, so I've finished this off. What you else did you put on? The pepper and then what else? Shot. And just a little bit of salt. Oh, okay, there you go. This, is, this mozzarella is not this? an incredibly salty cheese, so I'm just going to add just a little bit more. If you're using something like a parmesan, um, you don't want to add any extra salt. Okay. And then that really just goes into the oven or the grill and we're just going to let that cheese melt. So I must quickly go do that now? Yeah, you go for that while I mix this. And then that's really it. It really is a very quick and simple Monday meal. Hey? It's a goodie. This is definitely <laughs> a winner. And that's really that. Ta-da. All right. We'll Delicious. The cheese. Smells definitely hearty. <laughs> Smells like I cannot wait to get stuck into that. But first, let's go over to Bonnie, who's, who's learning a lot about winter flu remedies, just in case you, like me, have a little scratch and an itch in your throat at the moment. <laughs> Bonnie. Now, with winter getting colder and colder and flu doing its rounds, it's important that we keep our immune system strong. And joining me now is, uh, oh, there you are, Heidi Dupre, who's going to show us a few flu remedies that we can try at home that are easy and simple. And we'd also like you to share some of your own. So please keep your phones ready. Okay. What's Bonnie, the what first step? We're first going to do a hot tonic. And that brings wonderful relief to all that cold and flu symptoms. Okay. And it will actually speed up recovery. So it's very simple. We Literally just going to pop some garlic, um, okay. chopped of garlic, fresh garlic, and then a couple of slices of fresh ginger root okay. into the mug. And then I'm going to have a pinch of turmeric, turmeric and, then a, okay. and then a pinch of cane pepper. Now it's important that the spices is non-irradiated. What does that, that has, mean? That means it's not going, gone through a type of heat process that okay. preserves it. And for best therapeutic action, all these ingredients work in a fine synergy and they all have healing properties, antibacterial, antiviral, okay. and anti-inflammatory. So this is all going to work together 
like I said, to bust all that cold and flu symptoms. Now, would I take this to prevent my cold or flu, or can I take it to actually get better? You can better take once both to prevent. If you mm -hmm. take in the morning, every morning, have a muck like this. But also once the first signs of flu, cold and flu, to take it then, and it will bring with all that irritating symptoms, but it will also speed up the healing um, healing process. Right. If you don't want mind, just to pour some hot water over there. And then we're going to let that seep while I'm going on making a smoothie. I love smoothies because of it's a perfect meal in a glass. Okay. I'm literally going to put a couple of vegetables and fruit in here. Right. The first thing we're going to start with is some cucumber. You don't have to peel the cucumber uh -huh. because all the goodness is actually in the skin or just beneath the peel. And it oh, also wow. adds extra nutritional value. I'm going to put a handful of spinach in there. Mm -hmm. You can use any green leafy vegetables. It can be watercress, anything in there. And then um, some apple. Yet again, we don't need to peel that. Mm -hmm. It's ideal to use organic. And if it's not organic, to make sure we okay. properly wash that. that I is have some, some fennel. fennel. Okay. So fennel is lovely for its healing properties, but also um, for flavor. For and flavor, fennel bulb wow. is in season at the moment. Okay. And if I use celery, I use the leaves as well. Yes. Because there's a lot of nutrients in, in the, the leaves, leaves yes. and in as well the fiber. So we're going to pop okay. that in there. How do I need to, how long do, should this tonic steam for? Ideally about 10 minutes. And 10 we minutes. also need that to cool down before we put the, the, honey. the honey. So we're going to leave that okay. till I've done okay. the smoothie. All right. Um, I'm going to add a couple of slices of pineapple. Mm -hmm. The pineapple has bromelain in there and it also helps to break down the mucus and also good for digestion. Then we're going to have... And I can also take this during my cold and before to prevent... Well, this is for cold and flu, but just every day, like I say, a healthy meal in a glass. That's anyway, what I love yeah. about smoothies. Yeah. It's so versatile. We don't want that in there. It's so versatile. Okay. And it's just lit literally... You can start your day with seven fruits and vegetables, if we think of all everything that's in there. Yes. And then lastly, I'm going to put more lemon in here. Okay. The lemon helps to... Um, it's flavor. All these ingredients are alkaline. And it also and helps to antioxidant, preserve yeah. antioxidant and yeah. it helps to preserve the color. Because the apple and the avocado can go like brown yeah. and then you'll have this funny colors. Smoothie. So that helps to preserve the color. Speaking of which, how long would this keep? Like if I made some in the morning and maybe I want to have some when I come back from work. It's best it to keep? drink it immediately. Immediately. Any raw food, you know, you have the enzymes. It's best to drink it straight, straight away for all its properties. But yet again, it's, once it's preserved like this, it's still better than drinking... Another drink, and okay. it's best to have your smoothie, even if it's a bit later. Then I'm going to add a handful of ice All right. to keep the temperature down. If we mix, we generate some heat, and we want to keep the temperature warm. Smoothie is not so nice, but also it will damage sort of the healing properties. If you don't mm -hmm. have a strong power blender at home, then it's, um, you can just make sure that you use cold water and not um, and then just blend very short. Okay. And it's important not to overfill the smoothie. Otherwise, after blending, you might have this smoothie this, yeah, yeah. pouring all over. Uh, so we're volcano gonna, eruption. Yeah. We're going to close there and then okay. just lift it up. Wow. A lovely meal in a glass. It's very versatile. Awesome. There is some variations. We can, you can add some dates. and Some dates? One can add and a handful of dates. For flavor? Just for flavor, and it just really gives it body. Or you can add some coconut cream. Or your super idol, your um, favorite superfood can also be added to that. Like so it's very versatile. The idea is lots of nutrients and a lot of fiber in there. Mm. And enjoy a lovely meal in a glass. It tastes amazing and it's um, so refreshing. I'm just going to finish off our remedy here. This okay. side. So a generous teaspoon of honey. Mm -hmm. Also for flavor, but it also has antibacterial properties. Mm -hmm. And we mix that in there. You can strain this or you can drink it as is. As and is. Chew on the garlic and swallow that for extra healing benefits. <laughs> we all love Cheers. that. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> After the break, we'll be taking your calls, tweets and comments. Our question for the day, what is your magic home remedy? Tweet us at Afternoon Chat, comment on our Facebook page, Afternoon Express, or give us a call on 083-913-3728. We'll be right back after this, so don't go away. Win your share of 4 million rand in dreams. Style star 120 star 762 hash to enter.
back. It's still Afternoon Express. It's still SABC3. It's live, darling, and you are watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're still on the, on the couch and uh, with Cass, with Heidi, and, of course, Caroline. Today, we're celebrating fantastic women in sport. And because it is winter, all the sniffles, Heidi is here <laughs> to help us kind of eradicate them, right? So we asked you earlier on, just before the break, what is your home remedy? We we'll asked you to call us on 083-913-3278. And we do have Ivana all the way from Cape Town. You're live on SABC3. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Hi. 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 Our very first <laughs> caller ever. Welcome, Ivana. Hi. How are you guys? We so good. are amazing. Ivana, now Heidi is here and we asked you earlier on, what do you do at home to kind of, you know, get those sniffles away, to warm you up during this winter? Can you share with us your secret? Okay, so my secret is... I put cane pepper in my tea. Every single time you oh. have a cup of tea? Every single time. Let me tell you, it works like a charm. But what does it do exactly, Ivana? Because I've heard of cane pepper with a little bit of lemon and some maple syrup. What exactly does oh, the pepper cleanse. do for you? That's the master cleanse. Um, I don't know exactly what it does, but um, I it think works. it's got to do with the strong peppers it has. Um, it works for me. I don't know what it does. It just, it works Fantastic. for my colds and my flus, yes. Well, lucky for you, we do have Heidi here. Mm. Heidi, what are the benefits of putting cayenne pepper in your tea? The cayenne pepper is very good for circulation and warming up. And it's got antibacterial and antiviral properties. Okay, so it is genuine takes, merit in it. It takes that irritation of a sore throat away. It's gotcha. amazing. All right. But it's that warming, healing, and then speed up circulation. All right. Well, Ivana, now you know. Thank you very much for your call. Have a lovely, lovely Monday afternoon. But you can continue tweeting us, hashtag Afternoon Express. Heidi, what I want to ask from you, right, is if you're like me and you have no time whatsoever <laughs> to just get better, you just move, plump, go, here you go. And you really really don't have time to pause and mix something or do something real quickly. What can you do when you're on the road and constantly on the road? Well, I think with this remedy, what one can do is like on weekends, when you mm. have a little bit more time, you can, in an ice tray, squeeze some freshly lemon juice and make the ice blocks, lemon ice blocks, mm -hmm. and then ginger, um, extract a ginger extract and make the ice blocks. And literally in the morning, if you get up, just yeah. pop an ice block of ginger and an ice block of lemon in a hot mug of water. And then um, cool that down and generous spoon of tea, um, honey in there and drink that. But I think that's part of our problem. It's our lifestyle. It's yeah, not we have not time for nothing. It's we a just lifestyle. go and go. And then I, I think we forget that we have a whole pharmacy in our back garden, you know, and we forgot oh. that food should be our medicine. That's so yeah. true. Do you ladies have any particular uh, winter remedies or any f uh, like health remedies that, that you keep on hand just to give you extra energy and to make sure you don't get ill? Well, it's interesting. Having three kids, you know winter's going to be tough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when one gets oh, sick, yeah. it's like a domino effect. Everyone does. I find it's tough to eat salads in winter because it's cold. So I juice the veggies. Nice. Okay. Juice everything. Oh, Beetroot, right. everything. And they just Juice. drink their salads, which is fab. <laughs> You've got great kids. <laughs> Every meal taken through a straw. We love yeah. that. Caroline, and for you? Um, I just try and make sure that we eat really well. A lot of vegetables. Okay. Um, my, my children, I force them to eat vegetables. Even when they don't want to, they yeah. don't get to drink them. They have to eat them. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, let's go to Devin. Kanya, you live on SABC3. Welcome to Afternoon Express. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you, and so happy to be speaking to you all. Thank you very much. Durban doesn't have a winter, but... Not really, anyway. but we have a few cold days. <laughs> what are your remedies? Well, it's actually for the scratchy throat like Julie B said she has. Yeah. It's warm water with some honey and lemon, and then you also can add some turmeric, which is antibiotic. Uh -huh. And uh, also, uh, while you're drinking that, if you suffer with your sinuses, if you inhale that, it sort of clears the nasal passages. Oh, listen to you, Good girl. Good Listen to you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. All right. While we freeze everywhere else around oh. the country. Enjoy Durban. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank, thank you, you so Enjoy much. Enjoy the beat. And thanks for a good show. <laughs> Only a pleasure. Talking about good show, let's go to Facebook. We got a comment from Mansani. Abel says, more good music, movies, great shows like Afternoon Express and some Hamburg tea to finish off my day. Lols. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> We've got another one from Zach Berta. He says, if you're sick with the flu, try and get yourself booked off. And if not a possibility, then try not to perform too many other activities as this may lead to 
to you over exerting yeah. yourself. Try to stay warm and out of a breeze, especially in the evenings, and go grab yourself some antibiotics or grab a Carenza C. And should you have a fever, take Panado with that after meals. That's clearly a Facebook <laughs> comment, not 140 <laughs> characters. On Definitely Twitter. not Twitter, but Royal Master and says, for a fee, I give my family a glass of hot water and some lemon with honey and ginger, and honey is very, very good, all natural. Yeah, we've also got Dineo. He says at the, um, at the very beginning of any cold or flu, you cook some stony ginger beer in the microwave. I do that. Add your, really? I do that. Add your med lemon, drop in a disparate pill and sip it while it's hot and then cover up for the night. The cough and throat irritation will be gone. But like I said, you know, because I'm always on the move, the stony ginger beer is always there. So I take it, warm it, put it into, drink it with a straw and that's it. I don't have time to be like going yeah. to a doctor. Girl, I'm on the move. No, <laughs> with me, it's lemon water every single morning. Yeah. Boiling water with lemon in it and fun enough somebody once told me that if you do this every morning you will never get cancer because you're alkalining your body ah. so cancer grows in I mean am I right in saying this cancer grows in acidic environments and so if you alkaline your body as much as possible it's obviously the mm. healthiest way you can be Dr. Jean so, I know she does everything <laughs> on this show <laughs> <laughs> anyway thank you very very much for all your Facebook tweets all your Twitter comments and of course the calls and uh, hopefully we gave you some ideas of what to mm. do to eradicate that flu but flu vaccinations are always you know a very good way to go but uh, i think it's time for us to eat wrap up the show yeah, see what that actually i've kitchen. got one more question i want to know from you ladies is it okay to exercise when you're feeling a little bit sick say no please I say <laughs> yes. yeah, because more than exercises anyway i don't i do nothing i just sit <laughs> okay, so I if think you're feeling it, a cold coming down, is it a good idea? Um, it depends how bad it is. If it goes into the chest, then absolutely not. But if it's just a bit of a head cold, you can. And I often find that if I do have a little bit of a um, blocked nose, just a bit of exercise helps to clear it up, and I feel hundreds afterwards. So Fantastic. it might help you. Well, thank you very much. I learned so much from you, Caroline and Cass. Wow. All okay, right. now you can now eat. I, <laughs> I can eat, and I know exactly what to do when I become a mom. So I'm, yeah. I'm good. I'm good to go. But let's stand up, walk across, and see what Bond Bill is up to in the kitchen. Oh, um, goodness. Hanging. Oh, oh, Lady oh, Godiva. Oh, I am not in the kitchen because who knew the hanging from the ceiling and fighting flu could be such a joy? I did. <laughs> I definitely knew that hanging from the ceiling would be fun. Oh, <laughs> ladies. I'm going to ask our guests to have a seat. Thank you very much. Claire, finishing touches. What are we doing before we leave right here in the kitchen? Mm. Just took it out of the oh. oven. All that cheese is oozed and melted, and just to finish with a little bit of pepper and salt in the soup, and off we go. Absolutely. Can you delicious. see why I'm not as lean as you? This is what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's, you know, feed our guests. Make sure they have this Sicilian style uh, fish soup. Don't forget, you can get the recipes, the ingredients, everything you need on our lovely website, www.afternoonexpress.co.za. A big, big thank you to Cass Nighty and, of course, Carolina, Comrades Marathon runner. Congratulations as we continue to celebrate, inspire room in, in sport and all over the world and of course right here at home but yeah Heidi thank you very much we know exactly what to do this winter and thank you to you for watching Afternoon Express right here on SABC3 yeah. we are live we are <laughs> and it feels so so good yes. Claire you are a queen thank uh, you so much uh, thank for you. feeding us yep from myself Bonnie Jeannie D and uh, it's been we haven't done months. a Man Crush Monday though no. who's your Man you, Crush you, Monday you always keep it coming give it to us <laughs> Give it to us. Uh, Adam Levine. Levine. <laughs> Adam Levine. We love Adam Levine and we love yes, you for right. watching. Thank you very, very much for allowing us into your TV rooms and make sure you follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, wherever you have to find us. We love hearing from you. From all of us in the lot, let's yeah, meet together once again right here on SABC3 tomorrow at 4 p.m. Good evening and happy eating. Mwah. Love you. Ciao. <laughs> Okay, now you can finally... <laughs> Yay! Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we pay tribute to South Africans who are making a difference. Media personality Solly Philander joins us on the couch to talk about his charity work. We catch up with Sieven Delan's Buyelwa Boy. Former boxer Andiswa Marikane trains young girls to defend themselves. And in the kitchen, we make a Sicilian fish soup. Another feel-good production. Join us next time for more fabulous fun inspired by First for Women on Afternoon Express. For an insurance quote, call 0861 11 or SMS FIRST to 49267.